Hi, my name is Simone and I am 3D supervisor at Microbus Motion Control. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to import a file into Maya, a camera movement that has been exported from Flare in um, using an FBX file format. Um, this is the shot that we have. Um, we've been shooting it at Microbit. Where it has. <laughs> this is a low fi slate of <laughs> our camera assistant, Joe. Um, this is the camera movement. It's basically a very simple arch with a target tracking around a plinth and a can of paint. And I will show you first how to import the 3D camera that has been exported from Flare. And second, how to move and offset in 3D the 3D camera in order to match the position of the geometry that you or the CG artist close to you has modeled representing the can of paint and um, the plinth so that they can go on and do any 3D effects on it or any vi visual effects shot. Um, this tutorial is going to be quite meaty so I've divided it in two parts. The first part is going to be importing the camera and applying the image plane in Maya into the camera and the second part is going to be how to reposition the camera movement around the geometry of the previous or of the post face. Um, in this case it will be very basic geometry and um, yeah use reference points out of a second move and use them in order to offset and calibrate the scene in 3D. Um, this is the shot that we have, it's not wrong, it's the way we basically set up the camera was upside down on the camera bracket and I would like to stress that we've got, I would like to show you as well that we have a blue light which is going to be essential for us in order to align the footage to the um, 3D camera one is, once has been imported so you should see briefly the blue light after this light there on and that will be exactly when how our moving flare hits frame zero so the blue plate is set to frame zero and then in flare and then the rig will start to move and go through the camera animation right so I've converted the movie file in an image sequence file using After Effects but you can use whatever comp software that you like and that you used to work with. Um, I like to work with image sequences in Maya because they're easy to um, cache into Maya and less prone to error of compressions and they're easily readable so I call it CanArt and then it's got like a frame padding of three numbers from 000 to 106. Um, while I was converting it I also flipped it um, and downsized it to HD format which maintaining same the same aspect ratio obviously. Um, <coughs> just to make you aware of what the environment was this is how the setup was so it was a bolt on pedestal and that's the arch with target tracking around the can. This took me ages obviously to model this to plinth <laughs> and and cylinder. Um, but yeah that will that will be enough for what we have to show today. Um, um, yeah so let's start from a scratch and a brand new scene. I don't want to save this. Um, I'm going to import the camera as it came out from Flare. And the first thing you can notice, I'll just turn on the ground plane. Um, the camera is far from the datum. It's animated. It's a bit small. It came in a bit small. So what I can do, open the channel box and here in the hierarchy, select the camera and increment the locator scale to 25. It's a bit better. So out of flare through FBX what you will get is we don't need this group that 
that's come in through the import. A flare camera group, a flare camera, and a camera aim. This is basically the standard camera group that you can create with, with Maya as well. And as you can see here in the channel box, it's got various p parameters, like it's got the twist as well of the camera. So if you want to twist the camera, but you're not interested into that, you want the camera has has been shot obviously on set. So um, the camera will be animated frame by frame. So if we were checking out us with a stacked layout, if I was to um, open the graph editor, you will notice that the camera has been baked frame by frame. Um, those are the keyframes. Right, so um, the next step is to check that the frame per seconds and the time, the frame rate is set accordingly and that's exactly that. And the camera parameters are coming in from Flare. So if everything in Flare is set up properly, everything will set up properly into Maya too. So double check them before you send them over to the post-production company or to your friend or whoever that they actually are the right values. I am assuming that when you were shooting on set, Flare was set with proper kinematics and the kinematics were right and the lens offset was set properly as well and you evaluated it correctly. That is a, a condition that is necessary in order for this to work and to have a proper matching between 3D camera and real camera on set. Right. Once you select the camera, what you can do <coughs> is at the moment, um, let me split into side by side. I want to see what's I can what I can see through the flare camera. Um, so this is where I see through the camera right now. I would like to see, based on the frames, what I was seeing through the camera in real life on set. And in order to do this, I need to create another uh, an image plane for the camera. And it is in view. Select image plane, input image, and then what I can do is go to the folder that I created to store my image sequence, flare to my, uh, my uh, image sequence, the one that I've shown you before. Frame zero, zero, that's it. And then in attribute editor, I need to take use image sequence, otherwise it won't read it as an image sequence if we just read the first frame that you selected as a static image plane. From there, frame caching 101, my sequence is actually 100 frames, so that will do good. And then I play through. So now what I can see is the camera moving in 3D has been created an image plane that moves with the camera, and then I can see what I've seen through the camera in there. In most of the cases, this is going to be enough. A knowledgeable 3D operator will be able, down the line, to move around the camera group to match whatever geometry is going to be in 3D, and then work from there and create amazing visual effects. Um, for the first part of this tutorial, I think we're pretty much done and I would like to add a s just, just an extra step in case you want to change the frame range of the animation let's say to mirror maybe a bit more professional environments where they start from the frame a thousand rather than start from thing so from frame zero um, i'm going to change the layout in um, three panes split top so we've got a perspective here we see what we see through the camera here and then i want the graph editor here to show you the 
the case. So let's say the animation in Flare was from fr from frame zero to frame a hundred, but the post production house wants it to frame from frame a, a thousand to frame a thousand and a hundred. So what I'm going to do is to take the Flare camera and just to show you, select all the keyframes of the camera, and in here. This is the window of frames and this is the window of value per keyframe. So once I've selected all the keyframes and in the window of the time, I input plus equal a thousand. That will offset all my keyframes to a thousand. And what I can do now is to change my frame range to a thousand here. That's the starting point and then to end it at 11 hundred so now if I scrub through as you can see into the perspective view the camera is moving and I am at frame a thousand however the image plane is not moving anymore so the sequence is not scrubbing through and the reason why is if I select the image plane attributes the image number that is looking for in order to upgrade it into the image plane in the viewport is frame a thousand. However, my image sequence is starting from frame zero. So there is actually no frame a thousand in my image sequence. So what I have to do is to offset through this window here, frame offset, the image number in order to find the right number, which in this case is going to be zero. And it's just simple math. Basically, what you want to do is to subtract a thousand to the image number so that the result is going to be zero and that is going to be the first frame that is going to start from so if now play is going to cache again the image sequence inside the image plane and as you can see the image is still running through correctly right so that's all for this for this first part of the tutorial we'll see you in the next bit